Queens Mansfield here bringing you yet another video. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking for a Q&A, and I thought, well, why don't I finally do one? Now, I know a lot of you have been following me since I started this channel, and some of you have found out about me through RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. And if you haven't seen my Meet the Queens yet, I'll have it linked down below for you. And before I start, let me just take some time and really say thank you to WOW Presents, Logo TV, and especially RuPaul for giving me this amazing opportunity to meet all of you. And without further ado, let's answer some questions about my favorite topic, me. Our first question is from Bible Girl 666 Hey, Bible Girl! When do you feel like you completely came into your fully fleshed out character? Well, I'd say I really started to come into the James Mansfield character when I really started to take the YouTubing more seriously. I'd say the beginning of last year, the character has been developing over time. When I started doing YouTube more seriously, I was in that transitional period where I was really scaling back on the character and making her more fleshed out like a real person. So that she's like a Pee Wee Herman or an Elvira. This next question comes from Twitter. It's from at Slay Mansfield. Ooh. <laughs> I love that name. Who are your biggest drag influences? Well, my biggest influences in drag are a couple different people. I would say Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, really solidified in my mind the kind of character I wanted to create. A character that's really standalone and has a distinct personality, as well as the actress Jane Mansfield, who was a sex symbol in the 1950s. She was sort of like a living drag queen. She never left the house unless her hair was fully styled, unless she had on a very beautiful couture gown. She kind of lived her life like the human Barbie doll. She lived in a big pink house with a bodybuilder husband and a million pets. She was an extremely eccentric woman, and I love extremely eccentric women, so I decided to become one myself. <laughs> Our next question is from Facebook from Shelby Barhavand. She asked, what drag accessory could you not live without? My wigs. Let's see, actually, yeah, that's about right. I'd probably say my wigs. I don't think the James Mansfield character really comes to form until the hair is on, and poof, James is there. From Facebook, Karen Plaza asks, what color are your eyes? My eyes are a beautiful shade of poop brown. <laughs> They're that color because I can't wear contacts. I can't touch my eye. I just can't do it. It's hard. I can't. I simply can't. Also from Facebook, Aja asks, on a scale from Nun to Kimura, how much of a slut am I? Well, Aja, I'd say you're about a Sister Mary Eunice from American Horror Story Season 2. Toyota Corona asks, what's your favorite thing about Toyota Corona? Well, Toyota, my favorite thing about you is your sense of humor. Also, your trade diaries. It lets a girl know that you can find love anywhere, and I mean anywhere. Alma Leitonen asks, what do you think about bio queens on RuPaul's Drag Race? Hmm, as far as the possibility of a bio queen being on RuPaul's Drag Race, I'm all for it. I think it's all drag, no matter what gender, or what you were born as. If you believe enough in it, by all means, chase after that dream. Just audition and see where it goes. James Love Song Summers asks, were you a Halloween queen or a pride queen? Well, James, ooh, great name. I was actually a Christmas queen. I got asked to do a Christmas show for the LGBT Center here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin back in 2012. So I made a costume out of the little sewing skills I had at the time and a puppet to match it. And I performed a song called Global Warming by Vermillion Lies. And from there, it's history. I was hooked to it ever since that. Noah Brody asked, James Mansfield, are you a lesbian? Yes, I have tried everything. 12 gay points to anyone that gets that reference. Derek Sparing Aiken asks, what does your mother think about your drag? Well, Derek, my mother's actually very supportive. It was a rough start at first. My parents are Republican and a little more on the conservative side. So it was a little bit of a rough patch getting through it at first. Initially, I wouldn't say they were thrilled about it, but they saw how passionate I was and how much effort I really was putting into it and how much it meant to me. And they look past it, you know? They understand if this makes my child happy, then by all means, let them pursue this dream. I'm really lucky because my parents are actually very, very accepting and they saw that this is something I truly cared about and it truly makes me happy. So they've supported me and my mother is my biggest supporter. She's my biggest fan. I'm truly, truly lucky. I really am. Dexy Sincere asks, are you a pageant queen or a comedy queen? Hmm. I'd say I probably fall more on the scale of comedy. I look pretty, but humor is honestly my biggest passion. I like to make people laugh. That's really my biggest concern whenever I'm performing or doing my videos is I want to make sure you guys are entertained and you guys get a little laugh even if you're having a rough day and you just need a little pick-me-up. I hope I can be that for you. You could be laughing with me or at me. Either way, I'm still making you laugh. 
Glass Caveman asks, what's one makeup product you can't live without? Honey, all of them. If I had to choose, I'd probably say eyeliner because I could use it for everything. I could line my eyes, do my lips all in black, do my eyebrows, figure out what to contour. It's sort of like doing prison makeup. And I feel like it would work if I was stuck on a desert island and it's all I had. As long as you stood a good 20 feet away, you'd see my vision. It's like a Picasso. Chase Keach asks, what's your favorite silhouette to wear? If you ever looked at my pictures or my performances, I usually wear things that are among that 50s silhouette with the hourglass shape and usually like a mermaid tail at the bottom because I feel like it's the most flattering to me and makes me look a little taller. I feel like the biggest mistake I made for a long time was wearing hip padding that was far too big for me so it made me look really, really wide. It's all about finding that right balance, you know? Veruca Voorhees asked, how did you get so lucky to have such a great friend like Veruca Voorhees? <sighs> I honestly don't know, Veruca. I honestly don't know. I'm just so, so lucky. For those of you who don't know Veruca Voorhees, she's a walking scab here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but she's also one of my best friends. This little Phoebus asks, why do you wear flip-flops instead of high heels? Well, I'll let you know, I actually do wear heels. I wear what they're called a springulator heel or a mule. It was a popular high heel style in the 1950s. Jane Mansfield, Marilyn Monroe, all the actresses wore them. It's that backless high heel that the old Barbies in the 50s wear. That's sort of the inspiration I got from it. Schling Schling asks, can you do a death drop? If so, can you do a tutorial on how to do a death drop? Well, the answer is no. If I did a death drop, I would die. So if I were to ever do a tutorial on that, it's probably my suicide note. And I'm doing it in probably a way a samurai falls on his own sword. All right, Miss Olivia Life asks, ooh, this is a long one. Your videos are so informative and helpful to queens, whether they are just starting out well-seasoned. Why do you find it important to provide children with educational and instructional content? Did you ever work as a teacher? Thank you for everything you do, James. Oh, thank you, Olivia. Well, as far as being a teacher or being formally trained, I'm not formally trained in education. I'm not a teacher. I started doing the drag histories because when I was researching these people for myself, it was really hard to find a starting point. And I wanted to be able to provide something for people where they know the names, they have a little bit of information on them. And if they want to learn more, they could always dig deeper. And then I did ask, how is the energy of James different from James with a Y? She's a lot more outgoing, whereas Mr. James is a little bit more shy, a little bit more reserved. I'd say like a lot of drag queens, when you're dressed up as your character, you give yourself a lot more permission to just do whatever you want and really take more risks. I like to think of it as like the gay suit of armor. Sofia Rodriguez Ferreira asks, how do you feel when people ask you to come to Brazil? I get really, really excited because I want to go to Brazil really bad. I know they go super hard for drag there and I can't wait to visit there someday. Hi, Brazilian fans. <laughs> Sam Lee asks, what inspired you to start drag? What is your best advice for a baby queen just starting out? Well, honey, I started drag at the very end of 2012. I'd say my best advice to any starting queen is just keep doing it. Keep practicing, make mistakes. It's like death and taxes. Eventually you're gonna have to face it and you'll learn from them and you'll grow and you'll get better at your craft. Matthew Shanta Louise asks, what scares you most in life? I would have to say what scares me most in life are student loan providers. Anthony Sebastian Abramson asks, would you sniff another drag queen's tucking panties? Why no? Nani Lopez asks, how did you train your voice to go from Mr. James to Kitten James so easily? And is there a reason for you disguising your voice? Well, Nani, I will say this. I originally started off as a puppeteer. When I was doing puppetry, I would change my voice frequently. And this is one of the voices I could fall into for a long period of time without hurting my throat. As for why I do it in drag, it goes back to my main influences of Jane Mansfield. She kind of talked like a walking Cupid doll. I thought it'd be a really fun character trait to incorporate into my act. And it's kind of become a staple for me now. I don't think I could really be James and not talk like this. <laughs> Faith Haynes asks, do you have any animals? Why, yes, I do. He's a Shiba Inu and his name is Puff. Short for Puff Daddy. <laughs> Bethany Packwood asks, what was your school experience like? I went to Catholic schools growing up. I was actually thrown out of a Catholic school <laughs> twice. <laughs> I started off as a Catholic school boy, got kicked out for being too gay, and then went right to public schools. As far as that goes, I basically was in the closet up until my end of my high school year where I went to Alliance, which is the second gay high school opened up in America after Harvey Milk. I always felt safe there, and I feel like that's the most important thing, especially if you're gay or LGBT. The most important thing is to feel safe. Vanity Humphrey asks, if you had to kai kai with any girl from the last season of RuPaul's Drag Race, who would it be? Hmm. 
That's a tough one. I have to say kimchi. Edward Lupella asks, what inspired you to make puppets? Well, I started off by being a doll maker. I made little felt dolls in high school that I gifted to my friends and even had some displayed in the Milwaukee Art Museum. And from there, it kind of unlocked a hidden memory of my love for puppetry, especially as a kid. I always loved Jim Henson and the Dark Crystal and the Labyrinth. Beaches Nasty asks, what do you expect to see in the future for yourself? Well, honey, I'd like to see many more episodes of Drag Her Street being produced, as well as many more tutorials for YouTube. I really would love to do YouTube more often and just a full broadening of my channel to not limited to just drag, but also film and whatever comes to mind. Ugh, gay ass. What's your sign? All right. <laughs> I am a cusp. I'm a Pisces and an Aquarius. <laughs> Jules Eleganza asks, what's the best sewing machine for a beginner and where can I buy a cheap one? Well, honey, I'll tell you the secret. My sewing machine's from Walmart. I buy the cheapest store model possible. I'm broke, honey. I don't have money to throw around like that. So I gotta make do with what I have. You can make a beautiful drag costume with the cheapest line of sewing machines out there. I think mine's like $60. A lot of my costumes are created from things I found at thrift stores, as well as fabrics from Joanne Fabrics and Walmart. Connor Phillipson asks, have you ever watched any anime? Um, yes, actually. I was really into anime when I was in middle school. I think my favorite anime movie is probably Perfect Blue because it had to do with Hollywood, pink dresses, and girl groups, which are some of my favorite topics. Baby Spice asks, which queens continue to inspire you that weren't on RuPaul's Drag Race? Queens that inspire me constantly, I'd say probably Varla G. Merman. She was a huge source of inspiration for me, especially when I was in high school. I watched her videos on YouTube forever. And other queens like Hedda Lettuce, I've always been drawn to the queens of the 1990s that were a mixture of glamour and high camp. I always found that to be a really interesting contrast of being extraordinarily beautiful, but funny too. She does not mind being the butt of jokes, and I've always admired that about a comedian. That's my favorite kind of comedy. Jake Murari asks, what's your favorite Jane Mansfield movie? Oh, that's a tough one. I'd say my favorite one is probably Dog Eat Dog. It was released in like the late 60s, and what I liked about Jane Mansfield is that she wasn't afraid to get a little tacky looking. There's a great scene in the very beginning where she's rolling around in her underwear on a pile of money. It's campy, it's cheesy, it's in subtitles. Check it out, it's my favorite. Drag Race Slays asks, what's your favorite song by RuPaul? My favorite song by RuPaul is probably House of Love from the album Supermodel of the World. It's my favorite one for many different reasons. Most notably the name. I love the name House of Love because that's what Jane Mansfield's show was called in Las Vegas was Jane Mansfield and her House of Love. Also, I really love the message of it and RuPaul really doesn't get a lot of credit for being a great singer. He is a fabulous singer on that song. That whole album, he's great. Thomas Maddell asks, when did you know you were so fabulous? Ooh, honey, that's a good question. Birth. Sherry Blossom asks, who is your biggest hero in the drag community and why? My biggest hero in the drag community was probably Sylvia Rivera. I touched a little bit on Drake Herstory episode 10. I truly loved Sylvia Rivera. I learned about her in high school when I went to the LGBT center. They gave a lecture on the Stonewall riots and I was enthralled with this woman because it's history that was really kept from me, you know? Schools don't go out of their way to teach LGBT history. And when I learned about Sylvia Rivera and how she battled homelessness and really fought for LGBT rights up until her death, I especially love the fact that she was all about preservation of drag queens especially. She didn't want them to be swept under the rug and that struck a chord with me because I've always loved drag. It's been my obsession forever. Bruno Machado asks, what's your favorite show? RuPaul's Drag Race, especially season six. Season six is my favorite. Other than that, I'd say I watch a lot of YouTube shows, especially the Nostalgia Chick. She was really a huge inspiration for how I do drag history. Pink Mist asked, would you ever consider making a cartoon with your art? As far as me making an animated feature, it's actually been a dream of mine forever. I love to draw and I love to doodle. A lot of the t-shirt designs you see are my own original designs. It's a passion of mine. It was honestly my first true introduction to art. Thomas Duran 5 asks, who is your shoe designer? <laughs> Pleaser. The shoes I wore in that picture are pleaser heels, the ones with the feathers on them. I took the feathers off so that they're more an adaptable heel, and I actually dyed those shoes blue. <laughs> they were white originally. Katya Monsoon Delano asks, hmm, I wonder who her favorite queens are. What is your favorite look you've ever done? My favorite look, hands down, has to be the pink teddy bear looks, where I have the eyeballs as my boobs. Those are by far my favorite looks I've ever done. It was like a walking puppet. Rasha B. Halu asks, 
Why don't you block your eyebrows? Well, honey, it's an aesthetics choice. I love drag from the 90s, and a lot of the girls in the 90s didn't block out their brows. They incorporated the brows they were born with into their looks. I like the texture that the hair gives you that you can't get from a glue stick or drawing them on. I sacrificed my look as a man in real life and just pluck my eyebrows beyond recognition so I have a little nub here and just draw on the rest. So technically, they're blocked. Sort of. And Angry Bacon 97 asks, what was your first drag name? I actually had two names I was considering before I settled with James Mansfield. The first name I was going to do was Misty Malone. Ooh, can you imagine what it would have been like if I had that name? And the other name I was going to go with was just Shady. Shady, like that. And the whole character would be just being mean to everybody. But I decided, if you're mean to everybody, no one's going to book you. So, discarded that one right away. Well, that's all the time I have, kittens. Thank you so much for submitting questions for me. And if I missed your question, don't feel bad. This is actually kind of fun. <laughs> I think I'm going to do this again in the future. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. I am listening because I love you. Until next time, kittens. Bye.